Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Lucius Aurelian channel live stream or the Restituto Orbis channel live stream, whichever name we're going by today. <laughs> Let's give a greetings to everyone who's out there. Hey, Jamie, good to see you. Hello, OIC, Laura Painter, New West Reset, good to see you. Running Wolf, welcome. QCZ, hello. Pete B, how you doing? Kathy Childers, good to see you. And is that it so far? And I'll give everybody a chance to get logged in and we'll go ahead and fire it up. It's really good to see everybody. I hope you're having a great day. Old Tara Liz, welcome. Hey, Josh, good to see you. Always appreciate your sniper-like comments you have in all the videos. Hey, Justin Johnson, welcome. Barbara Whedon, Wedden, if I'm saying that properly. Kay Eating, hello. Looks like everybody's getting logged on. And is there anybody else who wants to say hello? You know, it's funny. I got a comment from someone saying that this uh, greetings to everybody was a waste of time. Adam Baum, my brother, it's good to see you. I don't ever think it's a waste of time to greet everybody, especially in a live stream. Rebecca, good to see you. Hope things are going well down in Florida. Fancy Nancy, hello. Devonk 777. Oh, we got a lot of people from Florida, it seems. Well, that's all right. We We won't tell our favorite old world Florida channel, okay? <laughs> Willie Nelson, sing me a song. <laughs> Laura Painter, good to see you. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, we'll get started then without any further ado. What's our real story? Good to see you. Okay. So we're going to share the screen here. And you just let me know when you can see this. Now, we're going to be doing a little bit different of a live stream today. This is going to be a little bit more of an open discussion. And I want to get some feedback from everybody because resets are very interesting. And the thing about, hey, G. Golden, good to see you. Well, thanks, Adam Baum. Fred McIntyre, good to see you. And I appreciate that as well. Yes, please mash that like button as you're coming on in. So for this one, it's going to be a little bit more of an open discussion. Main reason for that is uh, next weekend, uh, still planning to do the joint exploration with Old World X. And we're going to be looking at winnipeg and the bronx i got some good things to explore there so more of an open discussion i will share with all of you who are here that i have refined the five eras theory a little bit five eras theory and that's what we're going to look at towards the end of the presentation so or discussion or whatever we want to call it but uh oh yeah yep and has anybody hey larry strick good to see ya thanks for joining us andrew k welcome all right. Well, does anybody, has anybody seen this image before or does anybody know what it's from? This is from a couple years back and I'll be pretty impressed if anybody remembers this. This appeared in the news, but quite an intriguing image. And what exactly does it have to do with resets? <laughs> well, that's what it all boils down to, doesn't it? Hey, perfect storm. Well, thanks. Well, supposedly, ah, well, by all means. Yep. Norway. Oh, I see. You got it. So this appeared a couple of years ago over Norway, supposedly. Yeah. And there's a variety of explanations for it. Was it a spiral or there's video footage of it? It looks oddly artificial. So who knows if it's an actual image? Was it a launch? There's all kinds of theories behind it. And of course, we have an official explanation. Yes, it was a rocket launch and this is what it looked like. And now it seems as though anytime we have some uh, unique phenomena that's visible in the sky above us, they'll tell us it's some sort of launch. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Uh, oh, someone's quoting little Ren and Stimpy there, huh? <laughs> yeah, someone activated the history eraser button. Well, the interesting thing is that when this appeared, this was when you started to see a lot of the alternative research that was becoming a little bit more well known to everyone. This is when it started to get shared along the internet. Now, it wasn't the exact same date, but it did coincide with the rise of a lot of it. So, yes, and that is true, Adam, and that could be an explanation. And maybe that's why they tried to say, yes, they just shot a rocket up at the sky. Yeah, it does look holographic. But what it really boils down to is we always look for correlation and causation in what we do. Now, are there actual coincidences? Yes, I believe they are. But are they rare? And when you start to see a lot of overlap, does that necessarily mean it still is a coincidence? Well, no. And that's where we have to question and ask about what it really means. So I figured it was a good little image to start off uh, today's live stream with because, you know, we're told it was a rocket launch. We have other explanations. It does look awfully geometrically. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one, Rebecca. <laughs> 
yeah, that was kind of my thought as well, but you know, I'm not going to tell anybody what to think. Yes. And, uh, I was going to play the live video, but I thought I'd be taking a chance with a little bit of a copyright on it. So I just figured I'd show the image and that would be good enough, but you're more than welcome to take a look at the original video on it. And <laughs> you can certainly pose your questions with that as well. So, but it did correspond with the rise of the alternative research movement in the mid uh, 2010s. And it's one of those images that sort of stayed with me. It didn't have anything to do with it at the time, but I just happened to be thinking about it when I was looking. Baron Arcanus. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's actually where it ties into the reset there, Willie Nelson. So, oh, yeah. All right. So. On the channel, there was a full video concerning resets, and it's one of the uh, primer reset theories. And I remember I did some basic um, theory videos. You know, you have the unified grand theories of the old world in Tartaria, and then we had reset theories. So going back to that video, really what I'm looking to do is just pull out some of the signs that we have of a reset, talk about how that breaks down the eras, and then at the end we'll talk about how that... Uh, has been modified in the eras and what I've updated with the five eras theory and the explorations that we've done. And I've also factored in a lot of the great feedback from you. So I sound different. Oh, well, you know, it just depends what's going on. I'm in an area where it was 87 degrees last weekend and it's now in the low fifties, high forties. So maybe I'm just uh, adjusting to the weather a little bit. So oh, I know people always tell me that you sound different every time. <laughs> Well, it's good to see you. Glad you could join us. But in any event, the reset theories are really critical because that's where a lot of what you'll find is the foundation to alternative research. In addition to the mud flood theory, the concept of Tartaria or a civilization that existed before ours. So that's what's intriguing about it. <laughs> uh huh. Indeed. And what do we got there? Well, and, you know, there's a difference between a hard reset and then is there also a reset that they want us to think that we're in? Because remember that I often say that theatricality and deception are powerful agents. It's a quote from a certain movie. If anybody knows what movie, extra points for you. So, yeah, exactly. And it's uh, kind of funny because uh, it keeps coming up and everyone always wants to try to use a word to have a certain connotation or a meaning. You know, reset, conspiracy, conspiracy theory. Those are all the words that do. So, well, I'm glad. I appreciate that. I think live streams are a lot of fun too, and I like doing them the way we do them. So, okay, let's get into this a little bit more. Now, here's a question for y'all. Oh, Willie Nelson, you got it. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe, maybe not. Or maybe they're still into deception. We just don't know. Yep. And there was a reason why I featured uh, that in one of the film reviews back when I was still more into doing film reviews. They're still around, but yeah, that's true. It could be soft as well. So it's just all everything together and how it factors in. Now, does anybody think that this is a real image, a fake image, or what do you make of this image? Have you ever seen lightning do this? Yeah, very true. I'm just assuming you can see it, of course. <laughs> but is this a real phenomenon with lightning or is this just something that's made up? Oh, uh -huh -huh. Well, that's a good way to look at it, Cindy. And there's a lot of truth to that. And how much of a reset there is, is how much of a reset that we accept. Okay. Yep. You're right. Long exposure composite. Absolutely. Now, why do I highlight that? Is there any deception in this image? That's the question I'm going to ask. Or is it just a special image that's taken with a unique aspect of the camera? Does that make it a real image or does that make it a fake image? Or is this just a pointless philosophical question and I really and stop wasting time and move on? There is a point behind it. So, oh yeah. And, and you know what, Jamie, we do in the Midwest in the United States too. You'll see some spectacular lightning. Not quite that extensive, but you can see some really interesting horizontal lightning in the sky if you look up. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Yes, thank you, Isabella. <laughs> uh, there you go. 
And, and really what I'm getting at, Baron, and everybody else is you always have to ask questions with every image. And it's not to say someone's trying to intentionally deceive you with an image, but the whole point being is that we rely on images and even video, and we think that, well, this is always something that we can rely on. This is incontrovertible proof. Not necessarily. We have to keep a degree of skepticism with every single image that we look at and every video that we look at, because anything and everything can be altered. Anything can be modified. And a lot of times it's not even intentional. But is it real? Is it not real? Or if I showed you this image and I said this was real, would you feel a natural inset of fear? Yeah, exactly. Yep. So, and, and that's one of the things I try to convey as a deeper meaning within these live streams. You know, there's a lot more behind what we do with this research. Yes, it's entertaining to look at the buildings, no doubt about it. It's entertaining to throw in some dry sarcasm. But the deeper meaning behind it is that we learn to question everything that we learn to make our own decisions and not let others dictate our lives to us. That's really what I think is the most important thing. So, but back on to reset. So past the really cool lightning. Now, does anybody know where this is? Okay. I'll stop playing this. Does anybody know where this is? But this one's a little bit more obvious. Give you a little bit of a hint there. You should recognize some of the rocks. And I did do a video on this area a couple months back, but it had some <laughs> technical difficulties. So I think it's still posted in certain areas. <laughs> yeah, good guess there, Rebecca. It may as well be, right? <laughs> there you go, Fancy Nancy. You got it. And that's always a very questionable area. Ah, good one there, Adam. Yeah, we know what book you read with that. Yep, Colorado River. You got it, Kathy. Now, why do I bring this up? One of the things that we've looked at is in some of these larger rocks, we still see a lot of degrees of symmetry. We see horizontal and vertical lines. Now, does this mean anything or does this mean there could be more behind this image? Yes, it does. And that's why I always suggest that when you do explorations on the ground, these are the kind of things that you look for. Because a lot of times they'll want to tell you, well, okay, this was the river. Uh, yeah. Good one there, Matthew. Absolutely. Yep, and you can still find the article where that appeared in. Yes, this is true. Ah, <laughs> Pete B, you got it. And you can find all kinds of lines that don't really make a lot of sense in this. So could these be larger structures or remnants of very large organic objects, large trees? Right now, I'm more in the structure assessment, but I go both ways depending on what I look at. Last time I was there, I'm with the structure, so... The Wyoming cube, I have not. I have not. Yeah, it does look like a quarry, doesn't it? And I think that's what it really boils down to, is it's from the much darker days. So, Now, this is one of those questionable images. One of the things that we talk about with Reset is the whole concept of plasma and plasma fire. And we featured that in a little bit of the intro to this particular live stream. Now, is this a real image or is this just something somebody doctored? I don't know, but there's certainly a lot of accounts of strange things happening from the sky. Mm, yeah, exactly. Is it some sort of unique atmospheric phenomena? Not sure. But... It's just something that you look at and you have to question because there's a possibility it may be real. There is a possibility that someone just had a little bit extra time on their hands and decided to make a fun image and then pass it off as real. But it does go back to that uh, questioning that we all have. Oh, what do we have here? <laughs> yeah, there's a couple different accounts of that, Jamie. No doubt about it. Oh, very good, Kathy. Yes. That one's come up a lot too. Good old blue beam. I haven't heard that in a while. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Well, good to see you, Ian. Welcome. Good to see you. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Bionicle. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Willie. I mean, try explaining the uh, very spherical nature of it. No, they most certainly are not, and perhaps be more concerned about the ones that you don't see as opposed to the ones that you can see. Hey, Juan Daring Man, good to see you. So let's go to the next one. Now, we're more familiar with the whole concept of the flood reset. 
Oh yeah. And that's a good theory too, with the moon being a map. It's a good theory or it's some sort of projection. You know, we don't know. And it's just like, I don't try to tell anybody what I think the shape of the land or the realm is because you know what? I don't know. I've got my theories and they come out a little bit in the videos here and there, but we just don't know. But uh, on with the flood, you know, we certainly have a lot of concepts with the whole flood and everything else. And for all of you arriving, please hit the like button. But with the whole flood concept, we know that's one of the baseline resets because that appears in a lot, a lot of mythologies. Hey, thanks, Matthew. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> uh, maybe not. Maybe that's not people who are truly smart. And I like to think I'm not smart. I like to think that I know nothing. No, I'm not going to quote the show. I know you want me to quote the show. I'm not going to do it. But I like to think that I know nothing and that we have to search for knowledge as objectively as possible. And it's funny you bring up the firmament because that goes back to the original flood myth. They believe that the firmament cracked and that a lot of water poured in and completely inundated the planet or the land or whatever, the sphere, the disc, you know, we don't know. But we have accounts of floods and people will try to talk it off by saying, well, it was merely a localized tsunami and they reported it as it encompassing all the land. But I don't know. You know, it's a little too widespread to just uh, completely discount. And so that's why I think it's something that we keep in our wheelhouse. Now, this is another interesting image. And uh, Jamie, I do believe that this is from your stomping ground. Uh, this image from Australia of the good old pink sky. And what exactly is being reflected here? No, not sure. But this could be some sort of other atmospheric phenomenon that may or may not be real. And so when you look at it, you know, is this image modified or is it real? And I got another look at it here. So it was encountered by multiple photographers. So thank you, Random FX. I really appreciate that. You know, but uh, when you look at something like this, what do you think it is? You know, what are your theories behind it? It's kind of one of the reasons why I'm displaying these images. So, oh yeah, Ian, and that's what they'll try to say just to, to laugh it off. It's all over. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> yes, that's what they say. And, you know, is, is there a possibility behind it? Is it real? I don't know. But it's it comes up a little bit too much to just ignore. And if you study different societies and cultures and you look in their myth and their history, you'll find accounts of it. So I think we can safely conclude it was not just a localized phenomenon. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. Good one there, Josh. Yeah, I think so, Jamie. You know what? I have to look in that and verify it myself. Now, that's a good theory there. Hey, Quantum Paradox. Yeah, Red Aurora. You know, what exactly is going on? Is it just some sort of visual phenomenon or is there really something going on? Kind of reminds me of the film uh, Fire in the Sky, you know, where those nasty aliens showed up. Oh, yeah. And, you know, Adam, we have these events all over the place all the time. I'll get to that one, Matthew. I'll get to that one. I've actually got a couple explorations that are going to branch out into that here in the due course of time. So, well, I can't prove you otherwise. I'm not going to try. I am not in a position where I've been able to see it. I can certainly tell you that it appears rather flat and it appears rather disc-like. And I can certainly tell you that in my flights, I've never really witnessed anything that would cause me to think otherwise, but <laughs> Yeah. And, and that's another thing, you know, is how many technologies they have or we have that we didn't know about or we don't know about. And that goes back to the concept of reset. So, well, welcome, Chris. Thanks for joining us. You know, we don't know what technology was left over from the reset. And that comes back to the industrial revolution and, you know, what was really allowed for everyone to be seen and what was kept hidden or kept concealed. <laughs> yeah. I think you might be right on that one. Good to see you, Tim. Well, that's the key to it all. Oh, yeah. Funny you bring that up, Andrew. That comes up a little bit later as well. Okay, so we've talked about this quite a bit, and uh, it never ceases to amaze me how there's a uh, unique effect on uh, explorations that feature this topic. But we always talk about uh, the great uh, fires and how they affected everything. 
And of course, we've got numerous accounts of it. Well, good to see uh, someone else from Wellington. That was still a fun exploration to do getting down there in New Zealand. Exactly. And true knowledge is power. And what is true knowledge? Well, ultimately, that's up to you to decide. Could be, Willie. Could be. Yeah, exactly, Rebecca. Fire that does act like that, so. Oh, yeah, we've we've seen a lot of aspects of how they could potentially dock and everything else. You got it, cat. The good old great fires. Never a dull moment. So I'll go through a couple of the other ones. And we've looked at plenty of photos of the great fires, but it's just something else to consider about a reset. And also think about, you know, are we talking about a great hard reset or are we talking about a localized reset? Because they have both. And you're absolutely right. And there's also the concept that they love us to perceive a reset. Ding, ding, ding. Exactly. You know, do we choose to accept it or do we reject it? Because the reality is we have a lot more power than we realize. And that's something that we always talk about. And of course, we have no shortage of images, every single city, all across the lands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, you got it, Ed. I'll, I'll just, I'll confide everybody, that movie's not one of the most enjoyable movies for me to watch, but you know, if you like it, all the more power to you, so. Well, thanks. I try to vary things up a little bit. We haven't gotten to the really good stuff yet. We're just uh, going through some of the setting the mood a little bit. And then of course, you know, more localized floods, you know, and the flood that stays with me just because of where I was at the time is uh, the 1993 great flood of the Mississippi, you know, and I'd been meaning to do an exploration of rivers and I just haven't gotten around to that one because other things have come up. So yes, I'm familiar. I'm familiar. And yes, he does a good job with statistics. Is it another facet of evidence? It is. Do I completely accept it as the end all be all? No, no. But I think he does a great job with statistics. There's no doubt about it. So, yep, you got it. And then, of course, we juxtapose some of the uh, fire images, some of the more recent fires. So, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh Yeah, you know, we, we've gotten back and forth about that one. I've gotten a couple of requests about that. So I don't know. Am I going to do an exploration on that? Or maybe I'll just talk about it offline. We'll see. Shangli, Shangli, welcome. Good to see you. That's not when it flowed backward, Kathy. At least there wasn't a documented time. There were some people, though, that said that it may have. So, but that was the great flood. Now, this is from the tsunami. 2005. And then this is from Hurricane Katrina, same year. So very interesting that there were all those things happening with water in that particular year. And then this is out in Illinois during the uh, flood of the Mississippi. So, and don't worry, as always, I'll have these posted on the Reddit and you are always more than welcome to look in the Reddit. And by all means, we'll uh, get some questions there. And I think it was uh, Abrams killer was telling me that we need to do a little bit of a review on that to make sure we field all your questions. So we'll make sure we get that done. And here's another, uh, another picture of the older flood, but you know, floods that they're considered to be cyclical events. So yeah, 1812 New Madrid fault. That's allegedly when the Mississippi flowed backwards, although we're sort of in the more amorphous times as we'll talk about it. So Good to see you. What is Truth Podcast? Thanks for joining us. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, they don't, Willie. And I mean, are they natural or are they just something that somebody knows about because they understand the cycles of time and the cycles of how things work on the land? Or do they have access to some sort of technology that gives them the capability to do this? And it's something I really haven't explored directly as much, but I wanted to introduce it a little bit here in this uh, reset. So... And that's what it all boils down to is how you look at this and how you perceive it. Oh yeah. This is one of my favorite ones. So uh, another one from the uh, great flood of 93 and look at that, a classic McDonald's. Doesn't that just make you nostalgic? There was a little bit more food in, in the food then, if you know what I mean. And uh, the building felt a little bit more welcoming. 
<laughs> so man i think it was somebody made a comment on uh, i'm trying to remember which video it was this week we talked about how mcdonald's has changed over the years and how that's another sign of a subtle reset and i really like that one well good welcome it's good to see you well and who knows if it's reality or if it's just something that they show us so oh yeah you have a good time doing that cat that's an awesome dude, Campbell. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to jump on the little springboard, too. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on. So, and then here, of course, we have the classic flood myth and another depiction of it. So, oh, yeah. Well, that's what we do. But who knows if somebody doesn't have access to something more? And that's one of the reasons why we talked about libraries. You know, what if there's a repository of information, knowledge, that somebody actually maintained all these records going all the way back to the Great Flood or even beyond, and they know exactly what the patterns are. And if you know what the patterns are, if you know when things are going to happen, imagine just having that knowledge, what ability that would give you to enact theatricality and deception and to manipulate a society to really have whatever perceptions you want it to have. Yeah, exactly, Ian. <laughs> no, it doesn't, does it? That's a good point. No, we don't have access. You're absolutely correct. But I'm just saying to think about it, if somebody does, and then, you know, of course, we'll be given little clues here and there, but, you know, and it could just be talk. But if you actually had that knowledge, would you let it out or would you guard it very viciously? And I think that's why that's something important to talk about. Yes, the Great Library of Alexandria. And then another place that reputedly has a great library. But there's definitely a lot more to that story. So, moving on. Oh, yeah, back to, uh, I think this is Jefferson City. Oh, yeah, Jefferson City in Missouri. Again, the Great Flood of 93. Ding, 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 ding. That's exactly right. And that's what it's important to realize. And there are abilities to gain that kind of knowledge. It's just something we have to tap into, whether it's just through our discussion and sharing information and observations. So, yeah, that's very true. Very true across the board. And then, of course, we actually have documented cases of landslides and people want to say that mud floods are ridiculous or that there's a definitive situation where they know it's a mud flood or a landslide. Oh, yeah. That's right. You got it, Brother Adam. Absolutely right. You know, and I, and I think that's what it all comes down to as well with understanding the details of each of these particular specific disasters, because you see some with the mud flood, you see some that reflect the flood of water. And of course, we do have documented cases of supposed meteorites or objects from the heavens striking the land and causing great fires. That's what they say, the Great Peshtigo Fire, which occurred in Wisconsin around the Green Bay area the exact same day as the Chicago Fire. Coincidentally, yes, another coincidence. And what really started that? Well, there's accounts of objects coming from the sky that started that. So what to make of it? Not sure. But that's what the accounts say. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to get into a little bit of uh, some interesting evidence that indicates that resets have occurred. And who here is familiar with the Plain of Jars in Laos? And if you don't know, Laos is Southeast Asia. It's right next door to Vietnam. At least what used to be uh, North Vietnam in the distant past, just to the west of it. It's an area that uh, was the target of a very sustained bombing campaign during the Vietnam conflict. And you're going to see why in a second. So can everybody see this image? Oh, and I hope I didn't lose you. Because suddenly I'm not seeing comments anymore. Is everybody still there? Sure hope we're not having any issues. First time I've had an issue with the live stream. Everybody just say hello. And let me know you can still see me. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Angel dreams. Good to see you. 
Well, I guess we're just getting so many chats on this, so maybe I'm just overloading the system. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the plane of jars, some images here. And so if you haven't heard about the plane of jars, it's quite an intriguing area to go visit. And you'll see that uh, it's literally what it is. It's a plane of very large stone jars with uh, unique materials behind them. And this just gives you an idea as to how large they really are. And then here's a better idea of the composition of them. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I see what's happening is uh, we've got so many chats here that it's just taking a second to load it up. So I might have to look into seeing if we can improve that a little bit for the next live stream. But it's thrilling to see there's so many people here. Oh, yeah. And it could well be. It could be something else. We don't know. It's just one of those signs, though, that we have that clearly something happened. And I mean, who is going to be making a jar like that? So who's going to be making a big stone jar and just covering the planes? What's the purpose behind it? Yeah, meteor bomb. Good point, Maxwell. Oh, yeah. And once again, that was an area that was bombed very extensively during the Vietnam conflict. In fact, a little known official fact from the United States Department of Defense, more ordnance was expended on North Vietnam than in all of World War II. So another little interesting thing there. But just more images of how large these jars really are and what exactly was their function and purpose. Clearly from some other civilization, from some other society. All right, I'll give it a second to catch up, but we're going to a good one right now. One of my favorites, the Temple of the Sun. And this is supposedly the only image that we have of it. <laughs> That's a good one, Fred. <laughs> yeah, and don't worry, I'll be getting down to Southeast Asia in good time. Yeah, that could be, Rebecca. That could be. <laughs> yep i think that's going to be a good exploration to do but it's on the list for southeast asia but i thought this would be a good opportunity to introduce it <laughs> jam jars <laughs> uh yeah lots of jam no doubt about it so this is the temple of the sun and this is like one of the very few images that they have of it. Now, is this an authentic image? I don't know. I mean, the Temple of the Sun in Rome lost a long time ago. It was from the actual Lucius Aurelian, if he did in fact exist, which, you know, I question that. Philosopher's Stoned. Hello, Hollowed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, Al, good to see you, Charlie. That's all good. Glad you could make it. Yeah, exactly. Titans of the old legends. Now, on that note, while this may not be here, this one in Baalbek, Lebanon, the Temple of Jupiter, is still around. Let me zoom in to give you an idea of just how large this doozy is. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's good to see you, Charlie. Glad you could join us. Yeah, the Temple of Jupiter. This is one of the most uh, extensive temples out there, and a lot of people do think this is largest. Although, remember, the columns on this don't compare to that nice standpipe water tower that we looked at, the Grand Avenue Water Tower in St. Louis. Yeah, you got it, Jupiter Temple. Yeah, isn't it funny how columns, columns everywhere. And I made a joke before the presentation tonight about how there's virtually no construction photos or videos of column. You just have that one really cruddy one from the Civic Courts building in St. Louis. Yep, all very true and all issues with the images as well. So, <laughs> oh boy, Rami Lane, well, Bones, you know, this is illegal. Yeah, they sure did. Okay, so let me get to the point behind this one. This is an older image of it, and this is supposedly when the temple was more complete. Again, I can't verify its authenticity. Looks pretty good. 
And then this is a rendering of what it may have looked like during its prime, but who knows if this is accurate. But I mean, it gives you an idea for how large it may have been. And who knows, it might have been something much more extensive than what we're seeing. It's okay, old world hamster wheel cranes. We're actually looking at a building that your old world hamster wheel cranes would have been very useful to make. <laughs> the Temple of Jupiter in Baalbek, Lebanon. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We're running out of Parthenon replicas, aren't we? <laughs> you can never get enough of it. But I don't know if this is what the original Temple of Jupiter actually looked like. But if it did, it was certainly some sort of extraordinary compound and actually beyond extraordinary, indomitable. <laughs> yeah, well, we joke about it, Ian, but there's a lot of people that'll just say we're fools for even asking about it, but that's okay. There comes a point where being called a fool becomes a compliment, and that's because you're doing what you need to do. Okay, so this is one of the stones that's still on site there, and what do you all think of this? <laughs> oh, yeah. Doesn't it? Exactly, Adam. And yet something did pulverize these structures. And I'm not really big on the whole time thing. Yep, Willie, it's in Lebanon. And this is still on that same grounds. This is called the uh, Stone of the Pregnant Woman. I don't remember why they named it that or called it that. I don't think it really makes a lot of sense, but whatever. And this just shows you how large one of these blocks are that they cut out of the ground. This is supposedly a quarry. But yeah, this is still in Lebanon, Baalbek. Yeah, exactly. No way. Not at all. Large cuttlefish. Oh, is uh, someone quoting Clash of the Titans? <laughs> uh. <laughs> No, they probably just grabbed anybody who was walking by, you know, because everybody was into just doing labor. Remember? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wooden rollers, Rebecca, and let's not forget, they also have a theory that they floated them to where they needed to go. Remember that with uh, constructing the pyramids in Egypt? So, <laughs> oh, geometrically precise foundation structure. Yeah, I just innovated that term this last week. You know, because everybody was uh, smacking around about, uh... <laughs> hey, Maxwell, good to see ya. Everybody was uh, smacking around about using the term star fort, so I just decided to innovate my own term. I tend not to do that, but, okay, so you might think this is the largest one of these that we have, um, one of the largest quarry sites. There's actually a larger one, and this is in China, and you can tell this is very much artificial. They can't uh, use that old story and explanation that, oh, it's uh, natural forces. Speaking of, I have to share this. Uh, somebody made a comment, I think it was on the Boston video, about uh, lateral forces causing the diagonal cuts in the buildings and all the rubble because, you know, the roofs were made of wood and the floors were made of wood. Yeah, somebody actually said that. <laughs> uh yeah, exactly. And then this is usually how people describe it when they see this. And you go there and you get an idea for just how extensive this compound is. So, exactly. Hey, good to see you. And no, I am not in any way affiliated with the Kardashians. <laughs> I'm never going to forget that one. <laughs> oh, well, we haven't seen nothing yet. Let's look at the next one. So here you can see the compound that this is located on. Oh, yeah. Well, of course, they're still quarrying them. You know, it takes a long time to quarry something that large. <laughs> and here's an even better image of it. So this is the entire compound. So here you can see this large stone being quarried out right here. And then over here, you can see this other stone structure obviously artificially cut and you got the big windows here 
So who exactly knows what this overall compound originally was? Yeah, exactly. And that, that's exactly how I describe it. I mean, that's a rock that somebody cut. And you can't explain that with natural forces. They acknowledge that this is a quarry. Some people try to talk their way out of it, but it's a quarry. There's no two ways about it. Somebody was cutting this stone, and I don't want to hear that it was a bunch of people in China with little hand saws that did it for 2,000 years because they had nothing better to do. Now, geopolymers come up a lot, Rebecca. We're going to be doing an exploration coming up, though, on concrete and different forms of construction because there's actually something that's even beyond 3D printed geopolymer. I know that's the hot theory right now going around. But there's actually something else I'm going to share with you all in a little bit more of a detail. Could be very true there, Breaking Free from Narcissism. Great title there. That's what we're all trying to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, that's where the curator lives, Josh. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I think when I see this, so. <laughs> yeah, you can make a game show out of it. How can you talk your way out of this being a quarry? Well, you see, natural forces over time, natural erosion. Don't worry. Speaking of no natural erosion, we got a real doozy coming up this week in one of the explorations about natural erosion. Now someone tries to throw that one around. <laughs> You're absolutely right. And believe me, I remember harassing several of my fellow professors about that all the time back in the day. Yeah, it's just natural erosion, right? You know, like maybe when their coffee or their scone disappeared. Yeah, scone. One of them was an exchange professor from the United Kingdom. I got all the love in the world for all my, all my friends in the UK. I'm just saying it was just something we did back in the day. Don't worry, they got me back. They stole my hot chocolate and then they stole my cookie. So <laughs> it's just how, you know, professors show that they care about each other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just something that you can't easily explain away. That's yeah, a lot like it, only uh, even more extensive. And this is considered one of the largest, at least that we know of. So no, I was never a troublemaker. I just have a sense of humor and I like to enjoy myself in life. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Believe me, you just have to, you have to enjoy life and embrace it every moment that you can. So, well, thank you very much, Dwayne. It's good to see you. I really appreciate that. What's that there, RC? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I rode this. Glaciers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, too. I always appreciate that. Okay, so before we move on, what this all boils down to, though, is, you know, we've looked at a couple different examples of how resets can happen. We've talked about how resets can be very hard resets that encompass all the lands, or they can be localized. There's even the perceptions of resets. And we know we don't have to say who's been trying to impose those upon us over the last couple of years. But when you see something like this and you look at the plane of jars, you look at all the other temples. And I mean, it's all over the place. It's all over the land. It's in every single continent. And yes, I'll even dare say it's in the continent we don't mention. And the one that we always get all these questionable images out of that we can't verify. Of course not. But we see that there's clear evidence that there is a reset that has occurred. We don't have a written history that adequately documents this you know unless you're going to say that in china this was during the time of the legendary sage emperors and they directed this uh, cutting and you know perhaps that's the most historical documentation you'll get of it but it's one of those things that you just absolutely have to ask a question on and realize that you are witnessing a reset here oh yeah who knows the nephilim might have looked like something we can't even imagine and to me that's a lot more frightening than clowns but you know when you want to frighten people you always go back to the clown whether it's the Jack Nicholson or the Heath Ledger type of clown. Uh, I guess uh, what's his name did a pretty good job. Joaquin Phoenix. I'm just kidding. I know his name. So <laughs> he's a great villain and gladiator too. All right. Now, does anybody know what this is that we're looking at? And first off, maybe I should ask if you can see it. Because we're talking about resets, but what else goes in line with resets? Where do you think I pulled a little bit of this five eras theory from? Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, it's a calendar. Yep, yep, I knew. Oh, look at that. You guys got it. 
the Mayan calendar. Absolutely. We go back to uh, the Mayan calendar a little bit because in summary, they talk about a long count calendar where a year or at least a full cycle, 25,000 years. <laughs> might be Maxwell might be. Yep. You guys have it. It's the Mayan or everybody has it. The Mayan long count calendar. Now, the reason I pull that up is we always talk about how they count ages and how they count resets. Now, is it accurate? Is there any veracity to this? Again, don't know, but it is a great way to depict the idea of having a long count calendar. And if somebody has knowledge of when you're going to have a hard reset, how useful would it be? It's one of the fundamental concepts of a hard reset. And really a hard reset is one that we would say somebody doesn't have any control over whatsoever. So... <laughs> well, they do have a way of calculating, at least we're told. Now, again, I don't know the veracity. And I'm going to say something controversial here. I am willing to do it. Who knows if they were even called Mayan? Did they call themselves Mayan? What did they call themselves? What language did they speak? Do we really have any idea or do we just say that we do? Oh, yes. That's always a good example. You know, what's our real story? Are you looking into my segue? Yeah, we're, we're going to be getting to that one too. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, and, and it can be kind of complex, but at the same time, there's also a rudimentary aspect to it and how it counts the years and the cycles. So it's just an example, and I'm just showing it as an example. It's not the only one. You know, there's a lot of visuals to it in terms of how time is counted. Here's another thing. Is time real? Or is it just something that's imposed upon us? Do we have a real sense of time or is it just a perception that we're given? You know, and if you go back and look at the date paradox video, we talk about that because we don't have a baseline event. Yes. Possibly. Very possible. You got it. All of you. You know, and that's why I think it's good that everybody mentions all this because all of it factors in, you know, whatever the shape of the land or the realm is, whether it's flat, disc, sphere, pair, or whatever Neil deGrasse Tyson says it is today, because it depends what day you ask him, it all factors in together. And it's clear there is some sort of cycle that someone's aware of. You know, it's funny how now we've uh, changed the seasons and we say that when the seasons change, it's a indication that, uh, how shall we say, disaster times are upon us. I was just thinking about that when it was 85 degrees last weekend, and now it's uh, 47 outside right here now. I should just say it's disaster. It has nothing to do with it being October, at least in this part of the world where I am. <laughs> ah, yes, very true, Anon Canada. You're right. Ding, ding, ding. Time is a very human construct, isn't it? Maybe. Well, you know, either either I'm getting predictable or you know exactly what the next topic's going to be. So we'll just keep pushing on. All right. So you might remember how we tied a token into a lot of these explorations and the concept of resets. Well, token divided up his world of Arda or the land of Middle Earth. Arda was actually the name of all the land that he wrote about in The Lord of the Rings and all his other works, the Tolkien mythos. And he started off with different resets. And what's interesting to me is how the shape of the land changed in his resets. He had a disc world. Arda was a disc world. And then this is a representation of what it may have looked like. And then also, as they went through the ages in Arda, he documented how lifespans changed. So is age a human construct? Maybe it is. It's just intriguing, though, because we also see accounts of this in the Bible, of how in the distant past people lived much longer. Did they live longer? Did we count time differently? Or is the real explanation something in between? I don't know, but it's interesting how it comes up. It comes up in our actual myth. It comes up in what's supposed to be our fiction <laughs> or fantasy. Although, if you remember the exploration on Tolkien, we just didn't know. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then going back to the Tolkien example of the land, you know, not only that, but just also how aging changed. Also the shape of the land changing with each reset. So you might remember it went from being a disc to being a globe to having a separated land that you could only reach through one special route. So it's just all interesting things to think about. <laughs> 
Oh, you picked up on that QCZ. QCZ, I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, and another good example is look at Sean Connery. Look at uh, how he looked when he hit his 30s. Now you could say, well, once Sean Connery hit a certain age, then he never aged again. You know, it's true. And then there was different, uh, how shall we say, lifestyle choices. But yeah, maybe, Rebecca, maybe so. You know, and that's always a possibility. And maybe that's always been with us as well. You know, it's just, it's things that we have to question and we have to wonder about. But with resets, what I found interesting is how Tolkien changed the shape of the land. And he depicted that in his works quite a bit. And I thought that's a very interesting theory. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and I think you can make the argument that a lot were different back then. And you can actually go back and watch the movies from then and you'll even see it. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's, it's just one of those things that can be a little difficult to talk about. But, and then, of course, how he talked about uh, in Tolkien's work going to the modern era. And that's what drove a lot of my five eras theory. All right. So what you've all been waiting for, the updated five eras theory. Now, this is really what, yeah, exactly, Adam, Pangea to present. Now, the five eras theory, this is really the baseline document for all the research, all the explorations that I do on the channel. And I've updated a little bit because there's been a couple different things that I've come across in some of the explorations. <laughs> oh, yeah. And cattle and horses and everything else. Hold on. Hold on. I will. I will. Give me a second. We're just talking about it. Yep. All right. Hang on. Okay. Can everybody see that well as the full screen there? Just give me a yes or a thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Well, we're, we're going to be looking at this very distinctly, and then I'm just going to tell you about the changes, and we'll cover it uh, in summary here real quick. All right. So, and just so you all know, I can't see the chat right now, but I'm just going to talk you through this real quick, and then we'll discuss it. So the five eras theory, and just marked out the eras a little bit. I renamed the Golden Age to the Foundation Eras. Now, why did I do this? I noticed that uh, there was a propensity for technical difficulties whenever I refers to the golden age. And I thought foundation eras made a lot more sense because if you think about it from the first to the third era, there's a lot of foundation structures that are still with us and were used in the fourth era, the Tartarian era, the monument dome era. So depicted that a little bit better. I've taken my representation image of each era, first, second, and third, and then put it at the top of the era. So modified at that. Here we have the fourth era or the Tartarian era. And then we have our contemporary era where we have that lovely view of Los Angeles or pick your modern city. And each of the eras, we've delineated what we have. The baseline of religion is reflected by the sun because in my research, I found that all the major religions have ties back to what was originally sun worship or the religion of Sol Invictus. That's where that comes from. Sun unconquered, soul unconquered. And then you have the Tower of Babel. You have the great architecture of the first era the second era more of the large pyramids that are still with us today the third era the star fort builders or the geometrically geometrically precise foundation structures you see how this all ties together i try to have a method of my madness and then the fourth era which we've explored quite a bit i call it the tartarian era that's not to say that's what they called it but i think that's a a given name because of the representation and the affiliation with it and this research now the reset war this is a result of the recent explorations that I've done. And you might remember I talked about the reset war potentially starting in 1848. We don't really know. But stepping back and looking at it a little further, I think there's some evidence that there was a reset conflict going on from what we think of as 1750 all the way to 1850, maybe even beyond. And that would include the Napoleonic Wars. And we're going to do an exploration on that because Napoleon's a very interesting individual. And I think there was a little veracity to him. Now, did this reset war actually occur over 100 years or 20 years? Don't know. That's a very ambiguous time, and I don't think we're really so solid on how many years have passed from then to now. Remember, it's a theory. 
And then that's really what transitioned us into the contemporary of the fifth era. You have the orphan trains, you have the conflict, the indoctrination, and the new order that was established. And that's what brings us to today. So that's exactly how I've modified that and how we look at it now. So what do you think? The new five eras theory. <laughs> well, and, and that could be true, question the answers. You know what? Uh, or that could even be even more. Maybe it's more than a millennial reign. Maybe there's so many years in it, we just think of it as a millennial reign, but maybe it was 10,000, 100,000, a million. Maybe it was all the first eras. All right. Well, I'm glad you like it. It's just, it's really my way of trying to make a one picture representation for how our real story could have looked. And uh, it's probably something I'll be factoring into the book. So, and here's the thing. It's, it's always something that's going to be modified. There's always going to be new things that we'll discover together. And a lot of this is based on what I've discovered from you and these sessions that we've had in these live streams where I've been able to factor in a lot of the details that you've shared. 1902. Oh yeah. Well, don't worry. We're, we're going to be looking at the early 1900s here as well. <laughs> Most definitely. Well, you know, I mean, it's one of those things that's thrown out at him and I certainly don't want it associated with the golden age of Hollywood because isn't that quite the misnomer of all misnomers. <laughs> you know what? And, and refer to them however you want to. And maybe that's exactly when those civilizations existed. Maybe they're second era, maybe they're third era, or maybe they existed through multiple eras and they managed to collect themselves after the hard resets. Because remember what's, what separates the eras is the hard resets. Yeah, and it's always about rediscovering the tech and, you know, rediscovering what we're trying to do and what we're trying to be. Yes, I have, Jamie. You know, I swear, you, you just enjoy giving me all this great extra entertainment to look at, too, and you definitely keep me going, so. <laughs> Yeah, you see, breaking free from narcissism, I thought that's what a lot of people were like. But it's funny to me how it seems like there's all these people that come out of the woodwork now who suddenly care about history because they want to strike down this alternative research that we're attempting. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I'll be getting to that. I'll be getting to that. Peru's a very interesting place. There, There's a lot of unique questions there. I don't know. It depends uh, which resets you're talking about, Pyro. You know, some people refer to controllers. I don't know if there's controllers. I don't know if anybody necessarily controls the hard resets. My theory is they just have knowledge of them and manipulate events to their benefit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and isn't this ironic? You're having somebody that used to be a teacher. Although, you know, maybe you don't believe I was actually a cheat teacher, which is fine. <laughs> uh, well, and that's what boils down to. And I think we all knew that. And that's why we didn't exactly find it so interesting. You know, because we could tell a lot of it was just rinse and repeat, regurgitate, repeat, regurgitate. And stop asking questions. So, see, I do think that there's, I don't, I don't necessarily refer to a millennial reign, but I don't discount it because I think if there was, it would have lasted a lot longer. But, you know, I could be completely wrong on that. Yeah, potentially, or at least uh, people who are designated to do so, home bliss. I think there's a lot of patronage that goes along, and that's why it's hard to figure out who's really behind everything. You know, some people have different ways to describe it. Okay, a Gulfstream 5. I think an airship might be a little easier way to do that there, old world hamster wheel cranes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, that's a good point. Bad photos, bad account, we're not sure.
I did a video on the homunculus, and I'll be covering alchemy here pretty soon. Good to see you, though, Geif. I like the new name. All right. Well, I'd love to see it. <laughs> okay, I have not. And this this is one of those things I have to go back and look at here, Jamie. <laughs> Got some great designs for airships too, so that's always something fun to say. So, oh yeah, no, they have not, have they? Even though they should have been, and there's a lot of uh, accounts for that as well. Well, yeah, and we're glad you could join us, Rebecca. There's some wonderful people here, and like I said, it's the it's the feedback from everybody, and yourself included. That's helped evolve this theory. You know, this isn't the work of one person. Yeah, I just did the nug work on a slide, but big deal. I've been doing that my whole life. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. This represents all the input and the feedback that you've had through the exploration so far. Oh, yeah. And oh, boy, do people go out of their way to try to discount that. You'd be surprised at how many, uh, <laughs> how shall we say, visceral comments we get. What do you mean by grid pattern? I don't see any grid pattern. Okay. <laughs> Well, awesome. <laughs> well, I try to make sense of it. You know, that's, uh, it's always been my job, but now it just feels like something I'm supposed to do. And I just go along with what I feel like I'm supposed to do. Follow my intuition. I've learned to trust it over time. It hasn't led me astray yet. The Olympic, but don't worry, Mrs. Astor was safe. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot more to that as well. Definitely a lot more to that. Well, you're right. And, um, you know, and you can also say the same thing about ourselves, individuals. Do you think you're the same person you were 10, 20 years ago? I don't think so. You know, I'm certainly not the same person I was 20 years ago. <laughs> Olympic. Olympia, that name comes up a lot too. So in any event, <laughs> hey, there you go. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Airship driven by hamster wheel cranes. <laughs> well, thanks, Maxwell. I appreciate all of you as well. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that, that's what makes the live stream so unique and so special. You know, and if people are watching them afterwards and they don't always get the entertainment value, that's okay. It's not about the entertainment value. It's about the knowledge. It's about being able to evolve and go forward. You know, and those are kind of the best stories I've ever seen and heard of. Yeah, that's a great way to say it there, Watchmen. 44 and you've been about four people. Yeah, about a person per decade. That sounds about right. Well, I'll let y'all continue to guess if I've been three or seven people. Maybe I've been 200 people. <laughs> it seems to be the rule, doesn't it? I would just love to see something new that's built to the same standard. Wouldn't that just be so awesome? Well, that's okay. We got one every week and join us next weekend. Team up with Old World Exploration. Those are always a great time. Definitely one of the, the finest uh, alternative researchers out there, along with all the other all the other great ones. Hey, Angel Dreams, welcome. Well, thanks. Okay, what do we got here? One more one off field here. Ottoman Empire, Byzantine Empire, Spanish Empire, Russian are great are just names, so that was present. Probably. Very likely. Or at least what was of them was the remnants of what was originally there. Oh yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> yep. And that's uh, something else that we don't know. All right. Well, kept it going long enough for uh, this time. Actually time just flies by when we do these. Cause I, Oftentimes, I almost lose myself just reading your comments because they're so wonderful. I'm going to have to make sure that I go and look at these very carefully. What I'm going to attempt to do, and this is a recommendation from Abrams Killer. Great, great name. I've always liked it. To uh, go back and look at the uh, live chat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to field probably some responses in the Reddit. 
And so I'll make sure <laughs> I'll make sure. Yeah, no doubt. I'll make sure that I add those questions on the Reddit and do a post there where we try to answer some of the questions. So, but uh, it's been a wonderful time talking to everybody and I really appreciate your feedback. And I learned so much from all of you. A lot of times I learn much more just talking to one of you than I do. Yes, I got a Reddit. I'll uh, put the link up. It's also in the links on the channel. Lucius early in Reddit. It's there slowly growing. <laughs> well, thanks. I appreciate that. Well, thank you. What's our real story? Thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara. I really, really appreciate that. It means a lot to me, but it, it means a lot to me also that, you know, you're putting the time in here and you're helping me think through these, you know, you're helping me understand this. Well, thanks Rebecca. I appreciate that very much. You know, and all of you are always welcome to talk to me. You can always talk to me offline. You can email me on the channel email, contact me on Reddit, hit me on Twitter. I always enjoy talking to you and I want to always like your thoughts and ideas. No, nope, no Instagram. That didn't work out. I think there was something wrong with my name. I tried it, but that was back when I was going through my uh, trying social media sites. So, <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, if there's still a demand, then yeah, we'll probably go back to a weekly live stream. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad somebody does. <laughs> Honest, honestly, it's oftentimes the only way that I'm able to handle things is by keeping that dry sense of humor. So, well, I appreciate that, everybody. So, well, we don't have to de evolve as long as we continue to look inside ourselves and continue to be more and better than what we are. And I believe that we can. And yeah, you're right. That's exactly what they'll tell us. But, you know, People will tell us all kinds of things. We make our own destiny. We make our own decisions. So, yeah, exactly. So, in any event, I appreciate everyone being here. And I will correspond with Old World Exploration. And I'll look to get you informed over all the means necessary about when exactly we're going to do that show. It'll be next Saturday. And we would love to see you all there. And he and I are definitely going to go into some of our favorite correspondence on looking at Winnipeg and the Bronx. And so it should be a great time, but <laughs> Oh, come on now. Yeah, just a little bit of patience on that one there. Old world hamster wheel cranes. We'll get to it. Mr. Cool car guy, but well, and just uh, before I go, I would just like to say that I appreciate all of you. And I appreciate all of you spending your time here with me. And that's the reason I like the live streams a lot is because of what you contribute and what you say. And really this makes the explorations worthwhile. And so hopefully we'll continue to work together and we'll continue to evolve this theory and we'll continue to share the information that we have. So I hope that wherever you are in the land, that you have a wonderful day and you have a wonderful weekend. And uh, you enjoy the uh, whatever holiday it's supposed to be in the United States. So when I was a kid, they called it Columbus Day. But uh, I guess some places they call it Columbus Day and whatever else they call it now. So in any event. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, it's been a pleasure. Everybody have a wonderful time. And with that, this is Lucius Aurelian signing off. <laughs>